Welcome to Supernatural Results. I'm your host, Pitana Mutana, and uh, we're continuing in our series on the Encyclopedia of Miracles, <clears throat> where I've been um, sharing some of my personal experiences with the Kingdom of God uh, on many different uh, parts of what you can see from the Kingdom of God. And I say that the scripture I use in John chapter 3, where it says that <clears throat> Where Jesus was asked about his miracles, received a compliment or a comment that you are a teacher from God. Because no man can do these miracles that you do unless God be with him. And Jesus was always very good at taking away his attention uh, and putting it on God. You know, you know about the scripture also of, of, of what we refer to as the young uh, the young ruler who came to Jesus. He said, that, what shall I do that I may? First of all, he came in the good master. What shall I do to obtain eternal life? And Jesus said that, why do you call me good? Only God is good. And I think even it's, it's, a, good, it's a good disclaimer to put out, especially when you're about to talk about different miracles or, the, or strange works of God. That I have to tell you, I say that, don't look at me as if I'm any different than you. Look at Jesus. Look to God. The work of miracles. And know that there is nothing between me and you or anybody else. We all have the scriptures that we can look into. And as we look into it, we hear from God. God saying, yes, the same miracles I performed then, I can still perform them. Because I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this cements your faith in God. Paul said that my preaching was not <clears throat> with man's wisdom. Lest you should have your faith in the wisdom of man. But it came with the demonstration of the spirit and power. I think what I'm simply sharing is what I have seen of that demonstration of the spirit. Because the spirit of God likes to demonstrate things. He, and also he, he likes to demonstrate both himself and also his power. And so certain things are miracles. As, as I've explained, I said the miracles that we call it a general term of what you can expect to see coming from the kingdom of God. When the kingdom of God comes, what are the things that come with it? There should not be things actually, we're calling it miracles for, for, because for the sake of everyone who hears it and what they understand to be miracles. But they're supposed to be the normal Christian life. They're supposed to be, it's like Paul who said that, why should it be counted incredible? That God should raise the dead. He was basically telling them, he said, why are you persecuting me? Because I'm trying to tell you that this God I serve raises the dead. And then he goes on to say that, why should it become such a big deal that God raised the dead? Seriously? <laughs> Can't you look around and see that the God who made all these things to, 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 just do, to just raise somebody from the dead is such a piece of cake? And so... In our last program, we were talking about miracles <clears throat> connected to nature. And I gave the scripture about in Matthew 8 <clears throat> and verse 27, when they said of Jesus, said, the one manner of man is this. But you see, you have to notice, they never say the one manner of God is this. One manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him. You see, there's so much knowledge that the Jews had that has been lost. It was common knowledge to them. Even though they marveled, but they still said that this is a man commanding the winds and the sea, and they obey him. So they are saying that there is, there is a place as you pursue God where he can say, yeah, command the winds, command the sea, exercise your dominion over all the earth. Wasn't that the original purpose of God creating man? You see, we have to go back and study this instruction manual for our life because us as the product of God, as God as the manufacturer, to truly understand the product, you have to go and study the mind and the heart of the manufacturer. You have to. So you go back to Genesis and realize, why did God make man? He said, let us make man and let them have dominion over all the earth. So when we start to talk about trees, when we start to talk about the winds, the sea, all that is in the earth, and man was given dominion. He first sold it, gave it to Satan, and that gave him one. That's why even up to now, he's called the God of this world. But yet Jesus came and redeemed 
Jesus came and took that away and he gave it back to the rightful owner, to mankind. But you see, it, just like I cannot just like this, take my vehicle that I know how to drive and just give it to my, to my children, my two-year-old, my, you know, you, my, my five-year-old, my this, my that. Because I said, no, they have to grow in stature. They have to grow in wisdom. They have to grow in knowledge. They have to be mature enough to be able even to see it in the, <laughs> in the driver's seat. But also they need the knowledge on how to drive the vehicle. But just because they are C5, it doesn't mean that as they grow, driving a car will become, oh, they're driving a car. You see how this is the same thing we make of anything we see in the scriptures. When you're born again, the Bible says that you are still a baby, just like a person who is born from the womb. But yet that person has in them all the capabilities, but those capabilities have to be grown. So as you grow, it's the same thing. As you grow in the things of God, as you draw near to God and he, he causes you to grow, more and more things you find yourself being able to do. Just like, a, uh, you know, I'll take, uh, let me talk about my children. Maybe they, when they're maybe two or three, I, I can start to take them when they're, or their mother will start to take them. And when, you know, when she's going to get, you know, cross out of, or out of the dryer, then the two, three-year-old may be standing there and, and you know, right at the, the dryer is right at their level. He said, take those clothes out of the dryer. So they start to move clothes out of the dryer. You see, when they're two, that's what they start to do. Then when they're four, maybe say, okay, you go and, uh, you know, just another instruction. Um, you know, I'm trying to think about, you know, any type of chores in the house. When they're five, oh, you know, jump up on the, by the stove and let me show you how to make uh, an omelet. You see. As you grow according to the knowledge that they have, the more they're able to, the more able to introduce to them. And as a parent will be your joys when they finally can do anything that you can do. That's their joys. It's my joy if I can know that my children, they know exactly what to do. What Papa can do, they can do. There are even things that I will leave aside and say, I will never do them. I will let my children be the ones to do them. And so is with Jesus. He said that. The works that I do, you shall do. Even greater works. Does it mean Jesus can't do the greater works? He said, no, 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 no. I want to allow my people to even do some works that I didn't do when I was here on earth. Not because I couldn't do them, but I left it to my children. <laughs> Let's say, Jesus said that if you speak to a mountain, it will move. But he never did it in his time when he was on earth. He left it for us. And soon people who believe will come and speak to a mountain. And before television, before cameras, a mountain will move. It will shake like this and move and go like this. Why? Because every scripture must be fulfilled. People must know that when God says something, he means it and it will come to pass. <laughs> you see that? And so, as we're talking about <clears throat> Encyclopedia of Miracles, and I started to talk about Speaking to the winds and the sea. And I gave some of my own personal experience. Speaking to the rain. Speaking to the storms. Because a storm, if it comes in, a tornado, whichever, it's winds that are blowing. And they can even do so much damages all around us. Does it mean that they were actually supposed to damage our houses, damage our RVs, damage? Or is it because nobody stood and said, not this, not this way. Because you have to, you, you will think that just if you see a tornado coming through town or wind storms and hurricanes, people usually they will say it's God's judgment or they will simply say it's nature or this, they will find something. But not everything that is causing problems is actually ordained by God. Oh. <laughs> I just read you a scripture from Matthew 8, verse 27. Jesus, the wind and the sea, they were so boisterous. They said that the, there was a great tempest. This wind that was actually against the God of all the earth, ready to drown him. He said that the, sh the ship was being filled up with water. The, the people who were his, his disciples, Jesus, most of Jesus' disciples were professional fishermen. They knew what was coming for them. The boat was about to sink. And now you can tell me that the, the, this wind, the tempest, 
was coming from God. God was uh, releasing this wind to sink his own son on his way to deliver a demoniac. I'm trying to show you something. You see, <laughs> the devil can do quite a few things, I'm telling you. And so you see here, this wind was contrary to God's perfect will. And so Jesus who knew, and he says, he said, what are you so fearful? Oh, ye of little faith. You see, he's bringing it back to faith. Because faith is the ability to hear instructions from God. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? By the word of the Lord. An instruction. And so now, here there is a wind that was contrary. A wind that was trying to keep Jesus from going to deliver the demoniac. The man who had the legion, thousands of demons in him. <laughs> and the enemy said, no, 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 no. He is coming to deliver one of my men. I have had, this man has housed thousands of my, of my demons. And here Jesus is coming to set him free. Where are we going to have our own house now? Jesus is coming to deliver him. And this man has been a house for us for so many years. And they say, we can't have this. We have to stop him in his tracks. <laughs> so I'm telling you, not every windstorm that comes through town, not every tornado, not every hurricane that comes from the sea, and it brings so much destruction, is allowed by God. But the scripture in the book of Hosea says this. My people, this is what God's confession. He himself, this is God saying, my people. Was not even talking about unbelievers. They are destroyed. Destruction, it comes. Not because we lack love, not because we're not being merciful, not because, but he said that because of lack of knowledge. If I don't know that touching the fire will burn me, I can go and jump into the fire. Because it looks good, it's nice and warm, and I get close and I even say, wow, it's so nice. It's so warm by this fire. I wonder what will happen if I jump into the fire and sit in it. I know this sounds like, <laughs> but I'm trying to get you to, to understand these things. Because I don't have the knowledge that the fire will burn me. And so now, if I jump in it and I get burned, I will say, well, but God, why, why did you allow this? And he's saying, it's not me. Your parents failed to tell you that the fire is bad. You also refused to hear. I probably warned you a few times before this, but you wouldn't pay attention. Because one thing we have to understand is this. The scripture says in the book of Job, he said that God speaks to us in dreams and in the visions of the night. He, the Bible says that he, he speaks once and yeah, even twice, but man does not perceive it. God is so kind. God is so gracious. God is so such a masterful planner. There is nothing that will ever come your way that he did not warn you about. It just we don't pay attention. We don't perceive it. We need to know how to perceive God's voice. My people, in the book of Hosea, are destroyed for lack of having more of me. Is that what God says? My people are destroyed for lack of patience, lack of trust in me, lack of la no knowledge, simply knowledge. Knowledge can get you, lack of knowledge can get you all kinds of problems. So that's why you see, we can never be people who sit around. And not be studying, not be trying to get everything we can understand about God. Because every, every place of ignorance, the devil will exploit it in your life. And you will think that God has allowed it. But God is saying, if you will have listened the last how many years, you've been just sitting thinking that life, you just, you just go to church on Sunday and that's enough. But he's saying that this is your life. 
If it's your life, it means that daily you are studying something new about your new life. You are asking questions to people who have been before you. The same way children can be asking, you know, and the more they hear, the more they are warned, the less accident they can fall into. I hope I'm making, <laughs> I hope I'm making, I'm making sense. So you see, it's very costly to be ignorant. It's very costly. So much distraction can come to people because of lack of knowledge. I can tell you many times, <laughs> trouble could have come my way. Have not known certain things from the scriptures. I would have said that, oh, it was God's will for this destruction to come. I remember us being in California and we we're in a campground. And this wind came through, tornado, it's, then the, the rain was about to come and it's just, the, 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 the RV is shaking, it's, it's basically just about to be. And people usually will say, oh, this happens, you know, we're just going to have to fix the RV or the insurance will pay and this and that. And what a, And maybe I have a child's mind. Let's just reason a little bit. A wind is blowing. It looks like it's going to take away your vehicle. It's going to take away your RV. In the simplest of terms, who actually wants that to happen? Tell me that you sit and say, what? <laughs> the wind is coming and let me just see it come and destroy my RV or come and destroy my house and come and destroy the trees. The trees are about to fall on my house. And you sit and entertain those thoughts and you think that it's fine. Because God wants that to happen. And so in my child mind, I say, God, what's going on? Is this of you? I simply, I asked him. I needed to know. Are you, are you wanting this wind to come and, and, and shake everything up? Clearly he said, no, it's not of me. You deal with it. You stop it. And so I say, in the name of Jesus, all you winds, hush. <laughs> I wish you could be there with me to see how things turn around so quickly. And I'm, I'm left amazed. Say, my God, had I not first learned that from your word, have I not listened to your instructions and just go along with the with the notion that, oh, I suppose, you know, we just have to take it. This RV will have been destroyed. Me and my family will be left and we'll be crying out to you saying, Lord, what's going on? And not only the destruction of the RV, probably the entire campground will have gone down. So you see how <laughs> it's so huge that we get the knowledge of God. Oh, I've seen this, this thing of talking to the rains. We've traveled so many times. And you go through a place where there is so much fog and rain is coming down. And, and you just, again, we need to become like little children. And you say, God, could you be allowing this? There is some, are you trying to tell me that maybe I shouldn't be going to such and such a place? Maybe you don't want me to go and all these winds and it's a sign for me to know that I shouldn't be going to Texas or I shouldn't be going this. It's, this is not your will. You don't want me. So you are allowing all these winds and the rain and everything to stop me, is it? I'm yet to find that he's, him saying, oh, yeah, I, I had to send all these winds to stop you because you wouldn't listen. I'm yet to hear that. No. Sometimes either I hear him say, no, it's not of me. Stop it. Speak to it. Or if I don't hear anything, then I will simply say, God, Father, if these things are not your will, I will not allow them to happen. They are bringing destruction to not just either me, but all around us. This entire region can be flooded. This entire region can be. And I will speak to what? To the clouds. I'll speak to the wind. I'll speak to the rain. I'll speak whatever needs to be spoken to. Because Mark 11, 23, 24, said that if you will say anything, believing, and not doubt in your heart. It shall be done. I'm shocked and amazed how God is so generous. He doesn't even put anything on you. He simply says, whatever you will say. But you see, that also comes down to, <laughs> if you say something that is death, 
it will bring also death. Do you know that science has proved, <laughs> science is catching up with some revelation from the word of God that's been with us for 3,000 years. Life, death and life are in the power of the tongue. They have studied places like Japan or Switzerland or so many of these places where the, the, they have the highest number of suicide and the highest number of deaths. And they realize that people who, they speak death often. In your culture, in my culture, any language of the world you go in, you find that they have this, oh, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. Oh, I'm so dying of this. <laughs> they watched it in, in the, with their machines that as soon as a person is talking about something like, I'm dying, I'm dying, oh, I'm going to die. I'm definitely going to die from this. You go to the doctor and the doctor says, you have five days. He spoke death to you. Now, are you going to receive it? And then you come and start to tell people, well, I'm, the doctor gave me just two weeks and so I'm going to die in two weeks. And then, yeah, sure, sure enough, in two weeks or three weeks, person is gone. And they watched it on their instruments that as soon as the mouth is speaking, I'm going to die. That all the organs and everything in the body, they start to say, okay, we need to shut down. We need to shut down. And each one of them being watched on the instrument, shutting down, shutting down, shutting down, shutting down. The person is gone. Ah, the biggest thing a child of God can learn is to use their mouth right. To exercise your mouth and speak the words of life. There was a time, let me share this. The time I was coming from my, my work and <clears throat> I used to go home for lunch and out of nowhere, I start to lose breath. And I rolled down the window. I was grasping for air. <laughs> Death was knocking on my door. But I had learned the scripture that said that you shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of God. And so while I'm driving and I'm grasping for air, I'm saying, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of God. I will not die. I will live and declare the works of God. And you say, you see, when it's a fight, it's a fight and you have to fight until something happens. So for the next 10, 15 minutes, I was saying that I shall not die. I will live and declare the works of God. <laughs> That's what the Bible says, that do not be hearers only, but be ye doers also. That's what, that's what it means to do the word. You can just be getting so many scriptures and never have to do them. That's how you do a scripture. The Bible says that as I have believed, so have I spoken. What you believe in your heart, you have to speak it with your mouth. And so I got home, I took off my shirt, and I was outside just and still speaking. And it started to subside and come down. For the next couple of days, I was just. And my wife also came and spoke over me and said, No, you will not die. You will live to declare the works of God. <laughs> Obviously, I'm here to tell the story, right? <clears throat> I'm telling you, you can speak to anything. I have spoken to the car to work. I, we were talking to our friends. <clears throat> they, don't, they didn't even believe in the things of the power of God. Or, <laughs> and so, you know, if you talk to us, you're going to hear us talk about hearing from God or doing these things or speaking or, you know, just we're just going to talk about the life that the Lord is, is living through us. And so I, I can't remember what we told them, but basically we told them, we said, no, if a car breaks down, we speak to it. If uh, anything, we speak to it. Because if I can release life into anything. And that's again coming to the knowledge that you have to understand. And maybe I'll explain to you this in other programs. I'm going to read you some scripture that shows you the things you think that they are inanimate. They have no life in them. That they can come to life like this. They already have in them the ability to hear, to see, to speak, to... It's all there in the scripture. And so imagine we're talking to people who don't even... That's why I have to... You see, how will you do something unless somebody comes and tells you that it can be done? It can, it's, yes. <laughs> and so 
We're talking to these friends who even they're called what you call secessionists. They didn't believe in the, the Holy Spirit being active today. They didn't believe anything. But it was, it, it, they later said that we took him by storm. Because <laughs> we were saying things that were too much for them. But yet, deep down in their spirits, they bore witness that this was the things of God. And so we, 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 we stay with them for a couple of days and then we leave them. And sure enough, things start to break down in their house. The washer wasn't working, the dryer wasn't working, and it, it dawned on them. He said that those people, Pitana and Aria, those are Mutanas. Remember they told us that they speak to anything? In their desperate moment, the wife said that, hmm, I'm trying to find somebody to fix this machine. It won't fix. I'm in the, I'm in the, uh, <clears throat> In the country, so something has to happen. She goes to the to the to the machine to the wash and dry. Say, I command you in the name of Jesus, work. <laughs> and to her shock, ju -ju 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 -ju. <laughs> the dryer and the washer started to work. Uh, I'll give you another one. We have some friends who always, every year they go to the Philippines, an entire family of 12. Them and their children, they go to the Philippines to preach the gospel. They will go preach the gospel into schools, into villages, and they've seen thousands of people come to Jesus. Them, their children, they lay hands on the sick and all that. Great, great family. One year they go to the Philippines, and when they got there, there was, a, what do you call it? Is it typhoon or whichever, a hurricane, and it's devastating the entire place, and it's coming their way where they were supposed to hold their meetings. And so they're pray, they sent us a text saying, you know, pray, pray with us. It looks like it's going, you know, the, the, the hurricane, the rains that are coming in, they're going to destroy everything. And my wife sent them a quick text. He said, gather the people and speak to that. And command it to go back into the sea. You will not come here and stop the work of God. It's the same as this tempest that was coming against Jesus and his disciples on their way to deliver a demoniac. Though that precious family was at the, in the Philippines to preach the gospel and see, see people come to Jesus. And here there was some rain and hurricane coming to cause everything to become chaotic. They took that text. They went and spoke to it. What happened? Of course, he left. I'm trying to say that so that you don't think that, oh, that's just, you, you, you have some special powers, or you have some special grace, or this or that. It only works for you. No, I'm giving you an example of people we sent a text to do the same, and they did the same, because it's based upon the scriptures. Well, we come to an end of our program, and um, hope you are encouraged and strengthened and provoked unto more righteousness. But even more so, I want to talk to you who tuned in and you know Jesus is now your Savior and your Lord. There is no reason for you to go to hell because Jesus paid the price for you to not go there. The Bible says that hell was made for the devil and his angels, never for a human being. You as a human being, if you will put your trust in Jesus, you will never end up in hell. And that's the, <clears throat> the opportunity that I want to give to you. Believe in the Lord Jesus with all your heart and you will be saved. That's all the Bible promises. And it's impossible for God to lie. So will you do that today? Put your trust in Jesus and he will save you and you will not end up in hell. Well, thank you so much for watching. And I want also to encourage you to share these programs with as many people as possible so that people can be blessed and strengthened in their walk with God.